Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Roger, the wandering forester. Today I'm wandering up the Brecon Beacons for a wild camp. It's been a long time since I've been out. About six weeks, I think. My longest break since I started back into wild camping three years ago. By a lot. Anyway, hopefully I've remembered everything. Well, actually, I haven't remembered everything. I've left, left me a watch at home. But I got a camera and a phone that will both tell me the time. It's just that the, uh, the walk won't exist because it won't be on Strava. Hey ho. Anyway, I'm off at the hill. Catch up with you later. So it's Van Bauer in the clouds. No clouds over there. Bit of a bright sky down that way. We've had rain on and off the last half hour or so. You can see this lot. <laughs> There's uh, Corn D up there somewhere. Yeah, it's supposed to be sunny till about uh, five. It's not been. <laughs> oh yeah. It's one of those things is, I was worried when I left home that I put this jumper on and I was going to be too hot because the sun was blasting down. I drove all the way as far as Brecon with uh, sunglasses on and now it's raining. So if it gets any worse I'll have to put my coat on but I'll struggle for now I think. I'm just coming down to the one of the two main tributaries of the river Taff. So I'm going to turn upstream here. I'll show you the path in a minute. Save walking up what's in front of me, which is that. Not really wanting to go up there because I'd only have to come down again to where I'm going to camp. So uh, what I'm going to do is take the path that goes up that way, follow the river up for a bit. There we go. Enough for tonight. Some pretty wet and bedraggled people coming down. So I'm going to put my coat on, I think, because this wind is very damp. Very damp. So much from my weather window. Rain unlikely in the Brascan Beacons. Except when Roger comes out, of course. So, yeah, it's raining. I'm looking at, I think, something like 11 hours of darkness from just after six tonight until half seven in the morning, I think. So, uh, got plenty of oxos, coffees, etc., etc., to keep me uh, keep me hydrated and warm. But it does look pretty crap out here. <laughs> I guess it's the reality of camping this time of year. I always thought it's one of nature's finest tricks, really sort of mid-October time, the leaves start turning on the trees. And you end up with this glorious show of autumn colours. And then the day before you decide to go out and look at it, we get storms. And all the bloody leaves are on the ground. Wow. I can see absolutely nothing. That's my view. Never mind. Let's get up to this pitch because time's getting on. So, the weather uh, turned a bit, bit, uh, why did you describe it? Shit, it's shit. <laughs> uh, so I'm in the clag, it's raining, but I got the tent up, you can see I got the chin up this time. Nicely guyed out, not going anywhere. So I'm gonna dive in there and uh, Get out the wind and the rain. So I'm ensconced in the tent, it would seem, for some time to come now. The sun's... Well, you can say the sun's gone down. I don't know if the sun's gone down or not, but it's definitely got dark. Ah, So I'm in the clag. As you can hear, 
is chucking it down and occasional strong winds is like a constant wind but it's not that gusty it's just a lot stronger than I was expecting so luckily I brought the Chinook um, rather than the X-Mid not that the X-Mid wouldn't cope but it's a lot more comfortable in this one because I know it's going to sit here it's not going to do anything I've got it guide out and all round so looks like I'm stuck in the tent for the rest of the day actually or rest of the evening so there's not going to be a lot going on I've got food to cook um, I'm not sure where it is oh it's, it's out there I've got some chicken fry up some chicken I'm going to add uh, one of the Ben's one pan meal things to it and some rice I've got uh, tomato soup, oxos as usual, and also, first time in a while, I've brought my biscuits and cheese. So I, I don't know what I can do other than just sit here, cook my tea, drink, uh, maybe watch a bit of YouTube or, or whatever. Yeah, and chill. Yeah, so I'll get the down booties on. I've got a um, pillow to blow up. The bag is fluffing up nicely. I'll blow up the airbed a bit later on. I've got this uh, eighth inch foam mat to sit on so I'm nice and warm. And just chill. Yeah, just chill. Nothing else to do, is there? Can't go and look at the view. Too cold to stand in the wind. So, just chill. And relax. The oxo cube's gone all squidgy. It's not dissolving. Come on, get off. I think the oxo cube's a bit old. So it's sort of a. It's made itself into a lump. So I'll just stir this for a while. I've got to wait for it to cool down anyway because otherwise I'll burn my lips on it, won't I? Right, just while I'm having my brew, I thought I might explain why it is that I've not been out for so long. And mainly it's it's just like life really in that you know priorities and our priority for the last few weeks has been working on the house we're thinking that sometime in the next well we don't know how many years we, we're going to move so we're sort of future proof in the house for when we sell it and that means a new kitchen because you don't want people coming in looking at the kitchen thinking, oh, it's going to cost me 20 grand to do that, when actually it didn't cost anything like that. But we, we think we're going to be there for long enough to make it worthwhile us having a new kitchen. So new kitchen, and that means um, changes to electrics, plumbing, gas, uh, new floors, new cooker hoods, new hobs, etc., etc., etc. It's a lot of work. Um, we had a tiled backsplash, we knocked that off, created mayhem. We had some rising damp on what was, is now an inner wall, but was the outside wall of the original house, so that's been dealt with. So kitchen's arriving next week, so I thought, as we're almost ready for it, I need got to look at another day's work to get ready for it, then I'll, I'll come out when I got the chance. Yeah, so that's why I haven't been out, and that's why you may not see me again for three or four weeks, but I haven't forgotten you. Right, I'll get, uh, I'll get this, drink this, and then I'll um, start cooking my tea. already seasoned so the one pan creation
Well, what's the time? <clears throat> it's just gone eight. It's still raining anyway. And the wind's definitely died down significantly. Still blowing, but nothing to worry about. So I'm on to the biscuits and cheese. I don't know if I said this before, but when I got here to the pitch, I was feeling a bit ragged. So the wind was um, pretty intense, struggling to undo this. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, the wind was pretty intense and I struggled to get the tent up. I'm about halfway through getting the tent up. Well, I say struggled. I mean, once I got it pinned down, it was fine. But about halfway through, I'm thinking, this is dumb. What am I doing here? It's blowing. I'm getting wet. What the hell am I doing here? I should go home. And then I thought, well, no, no, I bailed last time. I am not going home. And I'm really, really glad that I didn't. Because it's, um, I say, the weather's eased off. It's just an ordinary everyday nightmare. Don't know if it'll stay like that, of course. But we'll see. And then down at her mum's again. So it was the ideal time to come, really. There's supposed to have been a better weather window than this, but it is what it is, isn't it? OK, so it's about half past ten, so I'm going to get my head down now. I've just been chilling for a couple of hours. I probably haven't filmed enough, really, but uh, to be honest, it's all about me getting out here, clearing a space in my head for the craziness that's coming with the kitchen next week. And um, just basically having having a bit of a well, I'm going to say rest, but the wind's getting up again. The moon's out. It's I don't think it's full, but it's close-ish. So it's quite bright. Unfortunately, we're still in the clag. I still can't really see anything. I did get out and take a couple of pictures of the tent. <laughs> it's about the only thing I can see, and that only because I had a light in it. Anyway, um, I'm going to get some sleep, hopefully and I'll uh, check in with you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. It's about half past six. Just put the kettle on. Waiting for that to boil. Cup of coffee. And I've got one of these track things. Actually, I've got two, so I'm going to eat one now. And uh, one where I get up a bit later, I think. So, it's, you know, say it's about half past six. I think sun rises about half seven, quarter past half past seven, something like that. Well, I can't be bothered to wait for it. I've been awake since, I don't know, half four or five o'clock. I woke up for a leak. Couldn't get back to sleep because the wind's up. It's been raining on and off. Uh, and we're totally clagged in, so... The whole point of camping at this place is, just over there, is the northern escarpment of the Brecon Beacon, so Corn Deep, Penavan. But you can't see it because of the clag. And I haven't seen it all the time I've been here, so... I'll have to come back, won't I? Anyway, um, Coffee's boiling, so I'm gonna warm myself up with a cup of coffee and um, yeah, eat my breakfast. I'll catch up with you in a bit. I've had this earworm for the last couple of days. Mr. Tambourine Man, Bob Dylan song. And I can only remember the first little bit. It's been frustrating me. So it's, hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy. <laughs> and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me in the jingle jangle morning. Like I'm following you. Now, the next line, I think, 
is take me on a trip above your... No, take me on a trip on your magic swirling ship. But I can't remember anything after that. And it's been bugging me for a couple of days. Of course, I could look it up. Or I could play the song. But where's the fun in that? <laughs> yeah, the wind's really got up now. As you can see, the uh, clouds rolling by. At, uh, over there is one of the ridges going out to Penavan. But, uh, yeah, I've got to go that way. <laughs> yeah, there is apparently a lovely view down into the valley, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, there's a sort of an inkling of it. Let me show you. I don't know what you can see down there, but there's, there is a valley there. And there's the Chinook, done really well tonight. Yeah, pleased with that. Look at it, solid as a rock. Like a limpet on the ground there, beautiful. Okay, well it's time to, uh, time to pack up, get on home. It's just gonna pass seven. I see the sun's up, apparently. <laughs> so, oh wow. First day out in six weeks, this is what you get. Never mind. Okay, that's me all packed up. Oh yeah, that was a bit of a struggle to be honest. Still, never mind. Left nothing. Left note, as you can see. No trace. As it should be. And so last time I was up here, some low life had dumped a couple of tents, and the locals were out looking for them. The tents, that is, not the low life. They'd obviously gone. Anyway, I'll get my bag on and uh, get off over the hill back to the car. Look at this. It's clearing, isn't it? It's not supposed to clear. It's supposed to be low cloud all morning. There are days when I wonder whether the weatherman's got a damn clue what he's doing. So, <sighs> Two hours ago, when I looked at the weather, it said low cloud down to 300 meters until lunchtime. Two hours ago. And that <laughs> is higher than 300 meters. So thanks, pal. I mean, I could have hung around for half an hour and show you the valley, but Never mind. Okay, I might have to apologise to the Met Office, I guess. That was but a brief interlude. And now it's all clagged in again. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you on the next one. <laughs>